If you're using an external hard drive to edit in Premiere Pro, and you should be, then you need to know that not all external hard drives are created equal. So today, I'm gonna to show you what you should be looking for in an external hard drive and how to test it. Hey guys, I'm Patrick Fuller, and today we're having fun with hard drives. And for me, I've always thought of hard drives until recently as just storage devices. And because of the new transfer speeds available, now we need to start thinking about them a little bit differently, especially when we're using them to edit in Premiere Pro with Media Cache or maybe even in After Effects. So I'm gonna test out three different drives. Tiny little Samsung guy here, a smaller drive that's uh, 5400 speed, and then one of the bigger Western Digital, my passport drives, because I want to show you the difference between them in terms of speed, how you can test it, and what it means. So let's plug this guy in first and get started. I like to use this black magic design product called Speed Disk Test, and it allows me to select the actual drive itself and then run through a battery of tests, ultimately showing you the write speed and the read speed. So to set a baseline, let's go ahead and test out the internal drive of the MacBook Pro, just so we can kind of see what kind of read and write speeds that has, and then we can start to compare that to the different external hard drive options. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna pull this up, I'm just gonna select the desktop. It doesn't really matter what I select here as long as it's on the drive and click go. So the internal drive looks to be about 1500 on the right and about 1900 on the read, okay? For us for today, we don't really care. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we set a baseline to measure against. So let's go ahead and check out our Western storage. Let's check the specs real quick. So this is a two terabyte drive. It's a spindle drive, which means it's a typical hard drive that has little spindles in it, magnetic readers. It's not a solid state. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that drive, WD storage here, click open, and then we'll start our test. Wow. That is incredibly slow. 56, we went from 1500 to 56, and from 1900 to 63. That's really slow, but let's check out this guy next. Okay, so let's check our untitled drive here. It would seem it's also a two terabyte drive. Doesn't really matter, I just wanted to show you that they come in all shapes and sizes. Now let's start a new test here, select our target drive. We we'll do untitled, click okay, and hit go. Okay, so that little guy is faster. We went from 50 something, if I remember correctly, to 110 and 60 to 125. So about double the speed, but nowhere near as fast as we need it if we're gonna use it for Premiere Pro or After Effects editing or just the cache. So let's check out this little guy. This is my Samsung drive. I just recently picked this up and made a quick video about how to attach these little thin guys to the laptop so that they're not dangling around everywhere. Um, this is a one terabyte drive, and you know, it's still got the little Velcro on the back. And the reason I went with this is because of its read and write speeds are supposed to be significantly faster, like in the thousands instead of in the hundred. So let's put it to the test. So this is the Samsung drive. I've appropriately named it blank. Let's get the info here. It would seem that this is a one terabyte drive. Again, size does not matter here. And let's go ahead and test it. Blank, check and go. Okay, so not bad. Not quite the thousand that uh, it was marketed as, but not bad nonetheless. 900 is significantly faster than 110 and 125. Now, full disclosure, I use that little hard drive all the time for After Effects and for Premiere Pro, and to be honest, I've never had another problem since switching. I was using the other two drives for a while. And they make even faster drives. So let me show you here. This is the Samsung drive. I'll put a link below just so you can see, so you can find the exact drive if you want it. And this guy is marketed at about 1,000 megs per second, which is pretty close. But if we kept running the tests or if we tried different scenarios, we'd probably get a little closer. 900's pretty fast. And you can see my one terabyte option here is only about 160 bucks. And if that's a little too expensive, you could try the 500 gig option. It's only 80 bucks, that's actually a pretty good deal, if you ask me, and it is full solid state. Now, one of the things that you're gonna have to figure out 
is if you're trying to also use this as storage or just for media cache. It might be a little expensive just to use it as media cache. I use it for both personally. That's why I got a one terabyte drive. And the two terabyte option here was it's just too expensive for what I could justify at 250. Now there's also another drive you could try, which is the Samsung X5. And one thing I wanna show here is that it markets itself at double the speed, almost triple the speed at 2,800 megabits per second. I have not tried this drive. And the real reason for that is even the 500 gig is still that 220 range in terms of price point. And if I wanted to hit that one terabyte, which is what I typically like to have for my external drives, especially that I'm gonna stick on my laptops, is $400. Okay, that's it for me. I hope that gives you a little bit more of an insight into the different types of drive. This little guy for me is great for mobile editing and just for media cache, After Effects, Premiere Pro, things like that. This little guy right here is not bad. I wouldn't necessarily use it for the media cache because I think it will definitely bog down and have some, some issues, some performance issues. It's not bad for storage. And this guy's really good for storage, fairly inexpensive. You can get them in two, four, six, eight, maybe even up to 12 terabyte options. Not great for media cache, After Effects, things like that, but fantastic for actual storage. If you got something out of this video, Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.